morning, everyone. Welcome to Dr. Zon TV. I'm your host, Dr. Sarah Barba Cabodil. Mga kasangbahay, handa na ba kayo sa ating talakayan ngayong umaga? Basta't Doctors on TV, siyak na kayo ay may panibagong kaalaman na bibit-bitin. Pero syempre, naku, iimbitahan muna namin kayo na i-follow po and i-subscribe ang aming mga social media accounts. Please like and follow our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Doctors on TV. And like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Just type www.youtube.com slash at UNTV News and Rescue. And you can actually send us po mga questions and comments sa mga pages na yan. Ako kaya after liking and subscribing, ishare nyo na po sa inyong mga friends and family. Alam niyo ba mga kasangbahay, ayon sa World Health Organization noong 2018, ang cancer po ang pangalawang pangunahing dahilan ng kamatayan kung saan umabot po sa humigit kumulang 9.6 million deaths or 1 in 6 deaths ang naitala sa buong mundo dahil po sa nakamamatay na cancer. Higit po sa 60% ng lahat ng bagong kaso ay nangyayari sa Africa, Asia at Central and South America na nagresulta po sa 70% ng kabuuang bilang ng mga namamatay na may cancer sa buong mundo. Para po sa ibang detalye, panoorin po natin ito. Cancer is one of the major non-communicable diseases or lifestyle-related diseases, along with cardiovascular diseases, diabetes mellitus, and chronic respiratory diseases. In August 2014, Dr. Antonio Miguel Danz referred to NCDs as a silent disaster of massive proportions that is devastating the Filipino population, resulting in 300,000 deaths per year, 800 deaths every day, and 33 deaths every hour. The impact of NCDs on lives is compared to two 747 planes packed with passengers crashing every day. Cancer continues to be a top health priority in the country, with far-reaching implications for individuals, families, communities, and the healthcare system. Based on the Philippine health statistics of 2009, cancer ranks as the third highest cause of morbidity and mortality in the country, following diseases of the heart and vascular system. Moreover, a study conducted by the University of the Philippines Institute of Human Genetics National Institutes of Health revealed that 189 out of every 100,000 Filipinos are affected by cancer. Additionally, the study found that four Filipinos die from cancer every hour, totaling to 96 cancer-related deaths each day. Behind, one of the most powerful weapons we have in the fight against cancer is knowledge. Mas malawak na mga kaalaman pa po ang ating tatalakayin miyamiya po lamang. Kaya stay tuned. Doctors on TV will be right back. Welcome back to Doctors on TV. Marami po sa atin ang nakarinig na ng salitang cancer, but Have you ever wondered how our genes play a role in the development and risk of cancer? For introduction of our discussion, let's watch this. Cancer genetics is the field of study that examines how genetic mutations and alterations in DNA can influence the development, progression, and risk of cancer. As we continue our discussion on cancer and its impact on our health, we are honored to have a guest who is an expert in the field of medical oncology, cancer genetics and genomics with years of experience in the field and who will provide us with valuable insights and expertise and the only doctor who practices cancer genetics in the Philippines. Let's give a warm welcome to our guest, Dr. Frances Victoria Que an esteemed oncology specialist from Makati Medical Center. Good morning, Dr. Francis, or should I say Dr. Eshka? Welcome to Doctors on TV. Good morning, Dr. Good morning, mga kasambahay. Okay, and thank you po pinagbigyan nyo kami. And of course, ito maraming uh, malilinawan okay, ng mga issues about cancer. No? Pero ito nga po muna, no? kaya mga kasambahay, makinig tayong mabuti sa ating talakayan ngayong araw dahil nakutiyak po na marami tayong matututunan dito. At para po dyan, tutulungan tayo ni Doc Frances or Doc Ishka na maintindihan ang mga nakapaloob po sa ating topic ngayon. 
So, okay, Doc, ano ba yung tinatawag na genes? Okay, genes and genetic mutations. Okay, so, when we're talking po about genes, um, ito po yung um, code or DNA sequence na kung saan um, lahat tayo pinanganak with this set of code na mm -hmm. sasabihin po kung ano tayo, it makes up everything about ourselves. No? So, it tells us yung kulay ng mata, kulay mm -hmm. ng buhok, um, skin color, ano yung race, ano yung risk mo of getting disease. So, um, these genes um, determine everything po about ourselves. So, when we're talking about genes and genetic mutations, um, generally, it would um, give us an idea no, kung meron bang uh, mataas na risk of getting certain mga diseases or mga sakit ang isang tao. I see. And uh, you mentioned about the mutation. So, sabi nyo nga, ito yung pwede mag-dictate yung risk ng isang tao pag, sa pagkakaroon ng disease. And that includes cancer. Okay. And uh, how much of cancer is hereditary? Um, when we're talking about cancer, uh, most of the time, it's what we call sporadic. Ibig sabihin, it happens by chance. Nagkataon lang. And mm -hmm. most of the time, yung mga factors na kasama po dito would be age, or mm -hmm. kasi mas matatanda na yung mga tao, yeah. mas mahahaba ang buhay natin. No? So, age would be the biggest factor of um, getting cancer. Um, aside from that would also be yung lifestyle natin, um, mm -hmm. environment, diet, smoking, alcohol intake, oral contraceptive use, chemical exposure, etc. So, lahat ng mga bagay nito will cause um, most cancers, about 90%. So, going back dun sa question na how much of cancer is hereditary, I'd say only about 5 to 10% of cancers are yung hereditary or yung mm -hmm. namamana. Na because cancers. generally speaking, cancer is multifactorial. Correct. I see. Okay. So, and what are the indications for possible hereditary syndromes? Uh, yung pinaka-common na nakikita nating indications to see whether someone has a hereditary cancer, most of the time, it's a young age of diagnosis. So, for example, example, for breast cancer po, anyone less than 45 years old mm -hmm. na nagkakaroon ng breast cancer. For colorectal cancer or cancer sa bituka, bituka. usually less than 50 years old. So, generally, anyone who would be diagnosed at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that po, we also see those who have mga strong family history of cancer. So, yung mga nakikita natin na may mga parents, mga auntie, uncle, Another grandparents, cancer. lolo, lola, o oh, lahat po yun, we take into consideration na ano po, that, that it might be a hereditary cancer. There are also certain situations na nakikita po natin um, specific types of cancers like breast and ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. colorectal cancers that will warrant um, genetics uh, referrals and assessment um, to be possibly hereditary. I see. And uh, I understand you mentioned about uh, or we agreed na talagang cancer is multifactorial. But syempre sabi niyo nga kanina may 5% okay, na uh, genetic predisposition. So, I mean, if granting na meron itong 5% ito in a particular patient, okay, and how do you usually does it cancer form. I mean, having ano, parang ito, itong klase ng gene or oncogene na tinatawag uh, or cancer gene. So, paano po nagkakaroon ng development? If someone is born kasi with a faulty or mutated gene that um, is associated with an increased risk ng ano, cancer, um, we would have an idea no, that they may be getting cancers at a younger age mm -hmm. and they may develop certain types of cancers that are associated with these syndromes. So, um, aside from that, we also have to take into consideration yung ding, um, environment, mm -hmm. how uh, someone lives their lives, no? yeah. so diet, lifestyle, smoking, alcohol intake, etc. So, all of these combined will um, maybe determine also at what age or when these cancers may manifest. But we know that if someone has a hereditary cancer um, predisposition gene, um, most likely, mas maaga magmamanifest yung cancers. Oh. Makikita to among several family members. I see. Okay, so having mentioned that, so, I mean, does it suffice to say na uh, lalo na dun sa may mga namanang ganito na klaseng ng gene, it's imperative that 
they should really live a healthy lifestyle and siyempre dapat uh, nagmamonitor nagma sila. Tama Correct. Po. Yes. Okay. Pero kasi, I'm sure maraming takot, no? Kung kunyari, nako, yung nanay ko, nagkaganto, yung tita ko, gantong cancer and ganyan. So, I mean, ano po yung guarantee po ba ng, kunyari, ng mga viewers na natatakot dito na magkaroon sila ng cancer, kunyari, having, ano, uh, having known na meron silang cancer gene? Okay. Um, it depends kung ano yung gene, kung sakaling nagpa-test sila, no? So, there are certain cancer syndromes that are associated with 100% mm. lifetime risk na pag meron ka nito, alam natin magkakaroon ka ng cancer at a certain point in your like, life. Pwede niyo po kayo magbigay na example. Um, examples here would be um, genetic mutations mm -hmm. in the TP53 gene, which we call Lee Frau Many Syndrome, mm -hmm. which will have a 100% lifetime risk um, for females of getting breast cancer. But this is very rare. rare. No? So the more common... Um, cancer genes no like for example for breast cancer mm -hmm. we have the BRCA1 and 2 gene mutations so these um BRCA1 and 2 gene mutations will confer about a 50 60 up to 80 percent lifetime risk of getting breast cancer mm -hmm. so it's not a hundred percent lifetime risk meaning that if you carry yung gene hindi siya automatic magkaka cancer ka Pero yung risk mo, mas mataas. Kasi lahat po ng babae, meron talagang risk of getting breast cancer mm -hmm. in their lifetime, about 12.5%. By the time you reach 70 years old, just because babae ka and meron kang um, breast tissue. I see. Mm -hmm. So, we all have that risk. Pero kung meron ka nitong BRCA1 and 2 gene, um, alam natin, no, mas mataas yung risk compared to the general The higher population. the risk. Okay. So, ito siguro yung um, okay, so we've, we, we, we've heard also of, ano, di ba, meron isang famous Hollywood celebrity, no, na, na because the, the mom yata got di diagnosed and isa sa mga kanyang uh, pinagawa would be, kasi positive din siya dito sa BRCA gene, so pinatanggal niya yung kanyang breast. So, uh, so yun po yung isang mga pwede rin gagawin ba? Ng mga, da dapat ho ba yun? I mean, what's your take on that? Yeah, correct. Um, so, we know this is Angelina Jolie. And yung mom kasi niya had breast and ovarian cancer. So, mm -hmm. isa yun sa mga indications, no, having two kinds of cancers in one person um, would be an indication to do testing. So, nagpa-test siya and nakita na meron siya ng BRCA1 gene. And dahil alam natin na napapasa to sa mga anak, si Angelina Jolie, even if um, wala siyang cancer, nagpa-test siya and she was also found to have mm -hmm. the BRCA1 gene. So, in that case, no, um, we have several guidelines kung anong pwedeng gawin ng isang pasyente. Um, a patient can undergo enhanced screening. Mm -hmm. So usually, pag ganyan, is uh, nag-uumpisa tayong magpagawa ng mammograms no, starting from age 25, which is different from general population guidelines na lahat ng babae dapat nagpapamammogram from age 40. Okay, so, so earlier so natin, na dahil Having, ano, have, having, having known na may risk factors. Correct. So, mas okay. maaga tayong nagpapascreen. On the other hand, meron rin pong option na magpagawa ng um, prophylactic surgeries. No? Prophylactic mm -hmm. meaning you take out an organ na pwede namang tanggalin because alam natin na may risk of getting cancer in those organs. I see. So, sa kanya, her choice was really to do what we call bilateral mastectomy. So, removal po ng both breasts also removal po ng ovaries and fallopian tubes kasi alam natin na mataas yung risk of getting breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So, in that case, it decreases the risk of getting cancer in these organs by about 90%. So, maganda yung data doon um, in terms of prevention uh, from getting cancers. Okay. So, kasi we've been talking about yung parent and then yung anak. So, basically, pag nalaman ng anak, medyo ano, so dapat early screening, no? Pero ito, am I more likely to inherit something from parent of the same sex as me or the parent that I most resemble? Hindi. Isa siyang Hindi malaking talaga. misconception. Oh. No? Maraming pumupunta sa aking pasyente parang um, 
mami ko naman, okay, bakit ako may breast cancer, ganun. Okay. And it's because we know that um, yung mga genes na to na mamana from either side of the family. So, pwede natin yung galing, babae, oh, pwede sa daddy. So, pwede kunyari, galing sa mom or dad. Okay, so say for example, sa dad side, no? Mm-hmm. Kunyari daughter, pero yung daddy niya, sa side nun, may mga nagkaroon ng breast cancer. So, may chance pa rin siya despite na daddy niya, sa daddy na side niya. Correct. Yun. Okay, so that is doesn't change there. Mm-hmm. Okay, kasi nga pinag-uusapan natin itong uh, cancer, itong genes, okay? And alam natin, genes talaga yan, contribution yan ng both mom and dad, okay? Nako, eto, doktora, no? Ano kaya pwede? So, okay, so maganda to na-inform natin yung ating mga viewers, no? So, pero, ngayon, kunyari, parang, uh, okay, nagising natin sila and, nako, I would want to prepare for a genetic testing. How do they go about the consultation? Ano yung mga procedures po na, na pwede nila? I mean, that's the step one. Most of the time, yung mga nakikita kong mga pasyente, um, nire-refer sila nung mga um, doctors nila like surgeon mm-hmm. or oncologist dahil na-diagnose na sila ng cancer at nami-meet nila yung criteria for being tested. Okay? Okay. So, um, I mentioned earlier yung mga tao na na-diagnose ng, for example, breast cancer mm-hmm. or colorectal cancer at a young age. Um, these would be indications no, na ma-refer sa akin. And most of the patients na I, that I see will be in that demographic. No? So, I see. Um, they will usually be referred from other doctors. Ngayon naman, we also have patients like, for example, in our wellness center, someone uh, will come in for a executive check. Just a walking pa- uh, oh, patient. Oh. Tapos nakita natin, ah, meron palang strong family history and they're concerned about it. That may also be another um reason for the patients to come in for a genetics risk assessment I see. Okay, and uh, usually, uh, does it change po from one patient to another? I mean, meron ba di kahon na mga uh, series of genes na ipapatest or it varies, it depends on the risk factor of that particular patient. Say, for example, yung parents niya, ganito yung history. Mm-mm. How does it go? Yeah, it depends. No? So, whenever a patient meets the criteria for ano, genetic risk assessment and testing, so they come in initially, meron tayong tinatawag na genetic counseling. No? So, um, we do what we call a pre-test. So, bago gawin yung test, titignan muna yung pasyente. We go through yung personal history, family history, and give them test options. So, mm-hmm. let's say breast cancer, meron tayong set of genes that we know would confer a higher risk of getting breast cancer. So, yun yung mga test. Ah, so, there are different oh. panels. Correct. So, depende sa kailangan ng isang pasyente. Mm-hmm. But of course, meron din naman usually yung mga uh, meron namang budget. I mean, gusto lang nila talaga para at least, uh, you know, they have this healthy dose of fear. It's okay with them na paggawa lahat. So, pwede rin naman yun. Yes, yun. pwede rin. So, but anytime we see a patient, um, the panel that we will offer for testing would be really dependent dun sa uh, personal history, family history. Okay. Yung bang tina- sinanong ko kayo na, yun po yung tinatawag na multiple panel uh, genetic testing? Or it's a multi-gene, multi-gene panel gene test. Yun po yun. Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, ito, Doc, no? um, we've, I've heard also of uh, the certain germline and somatic genetic testing. Ano po yung pagkakaiba nila? Okay. So, cancer po kasi, it's a genetic disease. It's caused by genetic mutations. And um, the difference um, between a germline and somatic mutation, first of all, yung germline is actually what we've been talking about no? mm. for the last couple of minutes, determining if a cancer is hereditary. So, a germline mutation will be something na um, pinanganak ka with this mutation. It's seen in all the cells of the body at pwede siyang ipasa sa mga anak. Okay. Oh. So, this is, uh, germline is a hereditary cancer. Ngayon po, ang somatic, somatic mutation naman are genetic mutations na nakikita lang natin sa tumor tissue or sa bukol. So, for example, a patient comes in with um, lung cancer mm-hmm. na kumalat sa ibang parte ng katawan. Ang standard protocol natin dyan is to get a biopsy, yeah. tissue sample. Titignan muna yon under the microscope to confirm that it's lung cancer. Tapos, gumagawa tayo ng mga molecular tests. Um, some examples would be EGFR, ALK mm-hmm. testing na doon lang nakikita sa tumor tissue at oh. ano po, it helps determine 
na um, ano po yung mga gamot na pwedeng ibigay sa patients. Based doon sa nakita ko na yun, kung saan nag-positive. Correct. But it is not hereditary itong mga somatic mutations. Okay. And uh, ito, generally speaking, sa genetic testing, what kind of samples do you usually use? For germline genetic testing, usually ang ginagamit natin, dugo, blood, dugo, blood. or saliva, laway. So, super simple lang po nung testing process. Um, for most patients, we will use these two samples, blood and saliva. Uh, on the other hand, kung yung sa somatic naman po, um, we have yung technology to use yung tumor tissue or pwede ring blood in certain situations. I see. And ito pong mga genetic testings, no? Um, ito ba, what kind of test is this? Uh, is this a qualitative type na parang uh, it's like, uh, okay, positive or hindi? O kaya a quantitative na it depends on the values po? Um, it tells us whether um, you're positive or negative. So, when we do itong germline or hereditary cancer tests, we have three possible results. So, positive meaning there's a mutation that explains why a patient has cancer, bakit mm -hmm. may cancer sa pamilya, and we can give recommendations kung anong pwedeng gawin nila for themselves sa ka-family members. Um, yung isang possible test result would be negative, meaning walang mutation, and most likely the cancer might be sporadic, happened by chance because mm -hmm. of lifestyle, environment, or other genes na wala tayong technology to test for at this time. Um, there is also another possible result, no? itong variant of uncertain significance or parang question mark, hindi natin alam at uh -huh. this point. Um, it's a change po in the DNA sequence na sa ngayon, walang information to say whether it causes disease or not. So, oh. ano lang, very preliminary genes, maybe there's not enough information. Um, also, kasi most of the... Uh, genetic information na meron tayo ngayon, nakabase siya sa database na mostly made up of information from Caucasian, white population. Mm. So, sa mga Asians, lalo na sa mga Pilipino, underrepresented tayo I in see. these international databases. So, there is quite a high chance of getting itong uncertain results. So, that is why limited mm -hmm. lang din yung maibibigyan itong confirmation. Right. But I, it's okay if someone gets uncertain results. It's treated kasi the same way as negative and we keep yung patients on follow-up kasi over time, as more people do testing, nare-reclassify naman siya to either positive or negative. I see. And uh, nakita natin ganong kahalaga ang genetic testing, doktora, no? And uh, I mean, comparing as a preventive measure uh, versus uh, parang uh, treatment-wise, okay, saan mas may, may benefit po when it comes, I mean, na kunyari magpapa-genetic testing, so mas magbe-benefit ba yung mga anak or kunyari the actual patient po ay uh, uh, makapagpa-genetic testing, uh, will it still help uh, for the management? Definitely, no. So, I always tell my patients um, there are uh, top three reasons to go for genetic testing. Number one, for treatment options. Pangalawa, to help see yung prognosis, how well they will do over time. And pangatlo, to benefit um, pay, uh, their family members na walang cancer. So, um, going back, no, um, in terms of treatment options, definitely it helps to open up treatment options para sa mga pasyente. Dahil, for example, for breast cancer, mm -hmm. those who have BRCA1 and 2 genes, alam natin that there are certain chemo therapy drugs that work better for these patients. As compared to the other, to, oh, to the Compared rest. to other chemo drugs. I see. Um, there are also, ano po, mga gamot ngayon, what we call targeted treatments mm -hmm. that um, specifically target itong mga genetic mutations na to. I see. Um, to help treat these cancer patients. And yung maganda rin kasi doon, ang gamot na to, tablets lang. So, aside from being more designed to target um, that particular yung specific na gene, gene mutation, it also has um, yung convenience mm -hmm. of being a tablet versus IV na medication. Um, and also, side effects profile is better. So, oh. mas maganda. Also, for example, for colorectal cancer, if we see patients who have certain genetic mutations, um, they open up yung therapy, um, sorry, therapeutic options, no, like 
uh, being eligible for yung immunotherapy, which is better, mas maganda yung responses ng patients compared to traditional chemo. So these are just take some of the examples na kung paano nagbe-benefit talaga yung pasyente mismo. Nakita natin very ano wide range ng benefits doktora no especially na kanina na mention ko nga rin kung gaano ta kataas ang ano rate ng cancer no both sa existence niya and yung mortality rate okay and uh, how young po yung patients or how young yung pwede nating uh, uh, recommend na mag magpa-genetic testing cancer genetic testing. Okay, um, when we do genetic testing, I will most of the time recommend na yung tao na na-diagnose ng cancer, um, kunwari sa isang pamilya, marami sila, no? yung na-diagnose ng cancer at the youngest age ng diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So, yun po yung ideal. In, so, kung meron uh, po sa family na, let's say, diagnosed at like, like 38 years old, mm -hmm. so, yung mga nasa family, mas maganda at 38 din makapagpa- no, I mean yung patient po na patient himself pinaka bata na diagnosis. So for example, na diagnose nga ng breast cancer at 38, meron pa siyang ibang mga family members na diagnose at a later age. I would start po with that patient, yung pinaka bata. Ah, yung pinaka na bata. Na okay. How about for wellness mm -hmm. purpose? I mean kunyari para lang uh, you know, sure lang nila kasi parang basically priority nila talaga yung health and they would allot budget for this. Yeah. Um, at what age po yung uh, pwede nating uh, at what earliest age natin i-recommend siya? I would recommend no for certain genetic mutations um usually someone who's already of legal age. So at least 18, better kung 21 oh, because early. They need to make yung sarili nilang decision na gusto nilang magpa-test. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain limitations lang of testing people na walang cancer. Um, but if they have yung established na ibang mga family members yeah. na meron na talaga nitong mga genetic mutations, um, we will advise usually yun pag, when they reach legal age. There are also certain genetic syndromes no, that we advise testing much younger, sometimes kahit baby pa lang tinetest natin. But again, these are very rare situations. Mm -hmm. So mostly, ano, pag legal age na. Naku, napakalawak pala ng usapin ito. Naku, kailangan po maging attentive tayo mga kasang bahay para po maiwasan ang misconception. But for now, let's take a short break. Dr. Sun TV will be right back. For continuation of our discussion, still here with us is Dr. Frances Victoria Kie, a medical oncologist, cancer genetics, and genomic specialist from Makati Medical Center. So at this time, Dr. can you run down uh, several you know, treatment options when we deal with cancer? Okay, so when we deal with cancer, no, it's what we call multimodality um, treatment. Mm -hmm. so, so most cancers will need um, several forms of um, treatment, like for example, surgery, mm -hmm. chemotherapy, targeted treatment, um, immunotherapy, hormonal therapy, um, radiation, among okay. other things. No? Um, so all of these things combined together um, would entail um, yung best treatment plans for most cancer So, mas patients. maganda yung response ng patient. But, right. uh, how would one determine if what he exactly needs would be like chemo or re radiation and the like? Uh, when we see a cancer patient, um, right now, the best way is really to have what we call a multidisciplinary team approach. So, besides having like a medical oncologist mm -hmm. like myself, we'll have a surgeon, a radiation oncologist, um, geneticist, pathologist, um, radiologist, and several other specialties so isang, isang, that really isang help. Talaga. Yes, it okay. has to be that way because... Um, there are several ways no, to address all the problems ng isang patient na na-diagnose ng cancer. I see. And, uh, Doktor, meron ba tayong mga, like, uh, meron tayong mga patients, okay, na kayo per se, yung mga oncologists, medical oncologists would not really uh, recommend to mga, any of the, of the men, aforementioned mga treatments? Uh, it depends on the stage, stage, the age, and yung kalagayan ng pasyente, how mm -hmm. well they are, what we call performance status, no? kung bedridden ba or 
active pa rin, ano? So, yeah. it depends on several factors. And um, given that, like for example, if a patient is diagnosed with an early breast cancer, um, we would recommend like surgery. surgery. Um, sometimes they would need chemotherapy, targeted treatment, hormonal therapy, radiation, depending sa size ng bukol, ano yung involved na mga structures. And besides that, we also have like a geneticist if the patient mm -hmm. would qualify, no, kung bata sila, kung may strong family history. We also have supportive oncology, no, so going through the um, lifestyle of the patient, diet modification, exercise, etc. So, in, that's one example of a situation where you go through all of these treatments. Ngayon, we have some patients that will present with, for example, stage 4, mm -hmm. metastatic, kalat-kalat na yung cancer. Yeah. Most of the time, these patients will not need surgery because it's too far down the line to do yeah. anything curative. Um, in that sense, then sometimes they would um, need, of course, the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. targeted treatment. Um, they may need radiation, for example, if they have brain metastasis or bone metastasis na painful or causes mga compression of certain organs. Mm -hmm. So, importante nga to go through um, what a certain patient has because um, depende kung ano yung meron sila na ma-determine natin kung ano yung best treatment option sa kanila. I see. Okay. So, basically, it's really a team no? that, that would yes. help a patient. No? So, mas maganda yung ganitong approach. And nako doktora, alam ko when we talk about cancer, medyo nakakalungkot ito. No? But um, do you have something to, say, to tell our viewers? Kasi syempre, marami po ang natatakot sa mga ganitong treatment. Kasi, uh, di ba, kalimitan sabi na ko yung side effects. Nako, may alam ako ganito. But, you know, um, would you like to ano, give hope dito sa ating mga cancer patients na nanonood po sa atin ngayon? Okay. So, para sa mga cancer patients natin, ano, syempre ang technology ngayon, 2023, compared to early Before, 2000s yeah. or 1990s, syempre mas maganda na ngayon. There is a lot of research going on. There is a lot of um, medications available to be able to help our patients. Um, I also would like to share um, that we do have uh, parang a group of patients na diagnosed with breast cancer that I was handling nung training pa ako. Mm. So, 2014. And I still see these patients now. It's 2023. So, these patients have all had um, stage 4 breast cancer. Mm. So, you can see that um, there are certain situations na kahit kalat-kalat yung cancer, um, we're able to extend our patient's life and also um, give them yung quality of life na nakaka-function sila ng maayos. Okay? So, for those who've been diagnosed with cancer, um, yes, we have treatments available. Um, on the other hand, I still want to say na, syempre, health is wealth. No? Yes. So, it's still important na um, we uh, prevent no? or screen so that we catch cancers early habang cura curable sila. So, I think that's still the most important um, foundation of any healthcare system na pinaprioritize natin yung wellness natin. Ano? Mm -hmm. So, um, genetic testing may help in that way because alam mo na matatailor mo no, yung um, best time to do any cancer screening method, yes. um, how to go through your um, lifestyle, no, your diet, exercise, intake of whatever um, medications, ganyan, to prevent um, getting cancer. So, I think it's important na while we're focusing on people who get um, diagnosed now with cancer, it's still more important to focus on those people who don't have cancer kasi pwede siyang ma-prevent. I am very well said, Doctora, and you might want to invite our viewers to visit you here at Makati Medical Center. Uh, thank you, Doctor. So yes, um, if uh, you're interested po in doing um, screening or knowing more about your health, please come and see us here. Po. Thank okay, you. thank you very much again. And uh, you know, thank you very much for those generous inputs. Talagang napaka-comprehensive ng binahagi nyo. And of course, thank you sa lahat ng uh, uh, help na nai-extend nyo sa ating mga cancer patients. Malaking bagay po yan. Hindi lamang sa mga pasyente, kung hindi sa mga pamilya po, itong mga cancer patients. Thank you once again, Dr. Frances Victoria Ke, a medical oncologist, cancer genetics, and genomics specialist from Makati Medical Center.
For more health tips, let's talk about beverages that should be included in a cancer-fighting diet. For the details, let's watch this. Magandang umaga mga kasong bahay. Kayo ba ay may kamag-anak na diagnosed with cancer? O tingin mo ba ay nasa lahi na ninyo ito? Naku, para sa iyo na ang pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw. Kung sa inyong pamilya ay meron ng may cancer, mahalaga na mas maging maingat na ang mga kaanak, lalo na ang mga anak, dahil posible na magkaroon din ng sakit na ito. Ang pagkakaroon ng maayos na nutrisyon ay mahalaga para mapalakas ang natural defense ng ating katawan against cancer. Ang mga pagkain gaya ng broccoli ay nagtataglay ng sulforamine, a plant compound that may help potent anti-cancer properties. Ang tomatoes din po ay good source of lycopene, a compound found in tomatoes that is responsible for its vibrant red color as well as its anti-cancer properties. Importante din po ang pagkakaroon ng maayos na lifestyle. Ang pag ersisyo ay nagpapalakas ng ating katawan. Kaya ugaliin ito araw-araw kahit isang oras lang po. Piliin din natin ang mga pagkain na sariwa at umiwas po tayo sa mga frozen food at lumayo na po sa mga bisyo na makakasama sa ating katawan. Pahalagahan natin ang ating katawan upang makaiwas tayo sa malulubhang karamdaman. Simple lang, pero malaki ang maitutulong nito para kahit paano ay malabanan ng cancer. Tandaan na importanteng magpakonsultang regular sa mga espesyalista para malaman ang latest na condition sa ating pangangatawan. See you again next week for more natural tips. Muli, ako si Jason Sanchez, your integrative medicine doctor. Please follow me on my social media accounts, Jason Sanchez Doc K. Because natural is beautiful, only here at Naturally Yours. joining us today. Before anything else, I would like to greet Iyo and Iya, Doc Alain, and of course, si EJ. And syempre, nanay and tatay, I miss and love you both. And that's all for today's episode. Naku, para sa atin po mga kasambahay, always take care and remember to prioritize your health and well-being. Together, we can continue to make strides in the fight against cancer. Muli po, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ito po si Dr. Sara Barba Cabudil. Let's make it a habit to learn about good health. Only here at Doctors on TV. We would like to thank Makati Medical Center, a hospital with a heart, located at Amarsolo Street, Legaspi Village, Makati City. You may contact them at 632-8888-8999. Like and follow their Facebook page at I am Makati Med, or you can visit their website at www.makatimed.net.ph. Makati Med Wellness Center, located at 7th floor Ayala North Exchange Tower 1, Legaspi Village, Makati City. Mestiza Soaps Mestiza soaps are made with natural ingredients and a combination of vegetable and fruit extracts which can be also used by children and pregnant women. Good news is that these beauty products are vegan and cruelty-free. For increase in orders, contact 0969-175-423133 or 02-8824-5217 or 02-8824-5217. Eight eight one three zero three two zero. Organic Acai. Support your health with a hundred percent organic superfood supplement, organic Acai premium blend, and Acai freeze dried capsules. Rich in powerful antioxidants, fiber, amino acids, vitamin C, omega fats, and other essential nutrients the body needs to help build stronger immunity against illnesses and help increase your energy. Organic Acai is available in all Mercury drug stores and other leading drug stores and supermarkets nationwide. Linden Gas Corporation, located at 179 National Road Landayan San Pedro Laguna 4023. For inquiries, you may contact them at 02-8824-0867 or 02-824-9360 or you can email them at lgcsalesco at gmail.com. And of course, salamat sa ating partner, ang DepEd Santa Rosa, sa pakikiisa sa ating atikain na maibahagi ang kaalamang pangkalusugan.
Clinica Figura. You may contact them at 0917-317-7272. Medical Depot, Healthy Nom Nom Food, Barba Cabaru Holistic Health Group, located at Unit 1531, Centurion Medical Makati, Century City, Makati. You may contact 0917-317-7272 for appointments and other inquiries about your health and wellness needs. Please like and follow Facebook page, Dr. Sarah Barba Cabudil. Special thanks to Dr. Gia Grace B. C. Son, Head of Makati Med Wellness Center, Attorney Pilar Nenuga P. Almira, President and CEO, Dr. Saturnino P. Javier, Medical Director, Ms. Arlene L. Sonco, Senior Vice President, Ms. Monica Reyes Dizon, Assistant Vice President, Mr. Mark Funelas, Unit Head Manager, Communications and Special Projects.